So to start with, this is another open chain webinar. Um, this is our 58th, quite incredibly. And today we're going to have a presentation about uh, license management, our good old traditional subject. We're very fortunate to have Alberto and Carlo from Array on this call and here to give us a presentation about good practices at Aliens for Friends in Eclipse on Eero. Now, before we start this webinar, uh, as usual, I'm going to show our antitrust policy notice. The full Linux Foundation antitrust policy is on our website, and you can read it there. If you're from a Linux Foundation member company, you can ask questions of our council, Andy Updegrove. Now, because we're all here for the webinar, I don't want to take up time with much, except to say that Alberto and Carlo are very experienced lawyers in this field and have been working in the area of not just open source licensing, but in all aspects of transactions, maintaining, dealing with conflict around open source for many years. So we're extremely fortunate to have them on the call. And we are in for a bit of a treat in being able to access their knowledge. I'm going to turn the screen share over. Uh, so you should be able to share your screen without issues, I do hope. Yes, okay. that is working perfectly. Uh, first, Carlo. Hello. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to this webinar. And thank you, uh, Shane and Open Chain for Project for hosting us. This is a, uh, a project we have been involved for many years now. And uh, we have already presented sort of uh, uh, at an early stage of development. And now we have uh, a full uh, view and experience. So uh, I will introduce very briefly the context of the, the project, so to uh, show the complexity and the challenges, the particular challenge of this project and the opportunities also that this uh, project offered to us. And then I will uh, leave the floor to Alberto for a more in-depth view of the history and the particulars and the, te the technicalities of this project. So a little bit of, uh, of uh, presentation on the usual thing, like, uh, what is Oniro? Oniro was born in the shadow, so to speak, of a uh, a project by um, by Huawei. Huawei created a full operating system uh, for the Chinese market, and they, they decided that they had uh, to to create something similar for the European and American market. And they, so they established a working group in Europe to recreate a functional equivalent, a, a full stack operating system for low spec devices, mainly for IoT and embedded uh, software devices. Um, and to be interoperable at, at many levels with uh, the, their own uh, operating system called Open Harmony, actually it was o Harmony OS at the time. Um, the the particular uh, feature of this operating system was to be able to create a a network of different devices uh, that could cooperate and interact and create a system without the need to go out and use a uh, a cloud back backhand to to work so they could negotiate with a a, a protocol uh, which also is also part of the project to decide who's which part of the system was doing what so actually it was initially developed by uh, Huawei from scratch it is based on uh, uh, on, on Yocto, and after roughly one year of development, it got donated to the Eclipse Foundation, and it became a top level project of the Eclipse Foundation. We have been a uh, member of the Eclipse Foundation 
since then, and I actually am uh, I'm in the steering committee of the working group. And so it became a eclipse on you. Meanwhile, and at the same, roughly at the same time, uh, Harmony OS got donated to a, a foundation in China, namely the Open Aton Foundation. And recently, after long negotiation and, and, and the complexity, uh, they, um, the Eclipse Foundation, Open Aton Foundation, has signed a cooperation uh, agreement so uh, to uh, make the two products to uh, uh, share specification and interoperability and share also other aspects of the development of these two components that are um, going to be more tightly integrated in the future uh, thanks to this cooperation. Um, the uh, our role in the in the project has been quite peculiar because unlike many other uh, efforts, we have not come late. We have come to the project very early and we have been involved since day zero in uh, the development. And we have even developed our own parts of a tool chain. Uh, we call it Aliens for Friends. And the reason of the name will become apparent in the in the presentation that Alberto is going to, to give. And this uh, compliance effort led by Array and Neutechbach, now in the Eclipse Nero working group, uh, consisted of a, a tool chain, which was part and is part of a more complex tool chain. Uh, I mean, the pipelines of uh, the creation. So it's tightly integrated into the development process. So that was our goal. And that provided a lot of, uh, of challenges, of course. Um, by uh, I already uh, mentioned, of course, ourselves. We are, are a law firm named Array. It's a loosely knit law firm. We specialize in IT law and especially open source. Uh, I have been involved in open source for more than 20 years now. And uh, after being a general counsel to the Free Software Foundation in Europe, I'm now the chair of Open Source Initiative. Neutech Bar deserves a little bit more of explanation. It's a, a company, actually, is, a, is, is a based in uh, Bolzano, the German-speaking part of Italy, uh, South Europe, Tyrol, as they, they call it. And uh, they are basically a a technology slash research uh, center. And it has a unique feature. It has a deep involvement in free and open source software. Actually, they have a, a South Tyrol free software center. And because that is a strategic decision of the of the province and of the tech parks. So they are naturally involved in this kind of projects, unlike many other um, technology uh, uh, initiatives and and, uh, and centers, which have more of a, a proprietary attitude towards uh, uh, technology. So um, uh, th this is uh, just for the cast of actors. Um, the 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 level of complexity lies with uh, the fact that we had to develop an entire operating system. Uh, in in uh, op, uh, in an embedded uh, um, setting, this operating system is based on Yocto. Yocto is has a, a lot of advantages. It con, uh, provides a lot of flexibility, so you can do pretty much what whatever you want. It's based on recipes, um, and uh, uh, but with with this flexibility comes a lot of complexity. And this complexity uh, comes from the fact, for instance, that there is no package system. So there is no prepackaged software and there is a little to no metadata to, to build upon, unlike many other, uh, emb even embedded uh, systems. And so the sheer amount of data uh, the sheer amount of software to to that, the sheer um, uh, amount of uh, different environments and hardware uh, hardware um, platform to support gave us a very daunting and uh, and challenging uh, task. 
Uh, of course, in the tool chain that we have created, there is a lot of open source, uh, a lot of already uh, available tools like uh, Fossology and ScanCode to, to just name a few, but there, 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 there were many missing parts that we need to develop and devise a way to uh, to uh, to process to achieve with limited resources, limited time. And this is just to give you uh, an, an overall impression. So um, enough talking for me, uh, time to leave the floor to Alberto. Thank you. So hello, everyone. And um, I'm Alberto Pieno. I'm a partner of uh, uh, Array. And uh, I'm also the um, the lead of the Eclipse on Europe toolchain project. And uh, I will uh, uh, start with a little bit of history because uh, it's uh, easier to understand uh, um, the current status of the project uh, by looking back to what we've done in the past uh, uh, three years. And um, so uh, initially, as, as Carlo already anticipated, um, the, we've been asked to draft a policy uh, for open source compliance uh, based on the open chain standard and uh, for, for the, the newborn uh, Onero project. And um, the, so we started to, to, to draft this policy. And uh, we, uh, apart, of course, uh, uh, for, uh, for the, the, the open chain specifications, uh, we had uh, uh, two pillars in drafting this policy. The first pillar is uh, uh, an upstream first approach in any uh, any any uh, aspect. So uh, when developing software, uh, when you're reusing uh, a third party software, and uh, also when uh, doing uh, compliance uh, work. And the other pillar is that uh, given the position of the uh, Onero project, which is not uh, actually a product, but it's a platform intended to be adopted by, by, by downstream users, um, the, the, we are not uh, doing um, uh, OSS compliance uh, just for us, but we do some extra work uh, to ease uh, compliance for downstream adopters. So we just, uh, we, we don't, um, do just our homework uh, for, based on what is legally binding uh, in our position, but we try to, to do some uh, extra work in order to, to ease the adoption of the project, of the platform uh, by, by, by the downstream. Uh, but uh, once we, we drafted the, that policy, uh, we realized that to implement it, we needed tools uh, because, of course, uh, it involves complex, pro complex processes that cannot be handled manually. Uh, and so we, we started using uh, Phosology, ScanCode, uh, we tried other tools, uh, uh, but uh, of, co of course, we, we already knew them in our uh, past experience. Um, the, the thing is that, as you probably already know, uh, automated scanners return too many false positives and false negatives. So we need human review on top of, of the, the tools. Uh, and uh, the, the, basically this is uh, what Phosology is all about. So uh, the, the problem is that on a big operating system project, it's too much work. And uh, with uh, limited resources, uh, we needed to find a way to handle it. And uh, we decided to do the open source way. So first thing we tried to find uh, out if there were some other work that we could reuse. And uh, we decided to uh, reuse um, the, the compliance work that uh, was already done in Debian distribution, uh, mainly for two reasons, because uh, Debian is a trusted project and even if uh, the, the work as any human work may not be 100% perfect, uh, the principles and the guidelines and the specifications that, that uh, the Debian project uh, 
uh, has bound itself to 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 to, to follow are are are, are uh, yeah are, can be trusted in our in our opinion and uh, the other reason is that uh, uh, all um, license and copyright metadata provided in Debian distribution are mostly all are uh, machine readable so uh, you have a file level uh, license and copyright metadata by design by specification and uh, so and and everything is uh, should be machine readable so you can reuse all the information in an automated way um so uh, we we developed uh, the, this project called aliens for friends and uh, and the reason is that uh, uh, we wanted to turn alien, uh, say, uh, meaning uh, third party packages uh, into friends. So uh, if we find uh, a match in the Debian distribution, uh, Debian becomes but becomes like a trusted friend that vouches for this alien uh, stuff and uh, say, OK, you can you can treat them as friends and. Um, uh, the the first release of Onero uh, the, the, in, within the Eclipse Foundation, which is uh, Onero 2.0, um, uh, came into the October 2022, and um, uh, the, the 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 current uh, that the, the status of the tool chain and the compliance work at that time uh, was uh, uh, basically uh, um, a complete. Uh, uh, tooling set integrated with Yocto, so we, we, where we collect the metadata and upstream sources uh, with integration, full integration with Phosology and scan code for license kind of view, and with integration with the uh, uh, Debian um, API to 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 find and and and, and uh, matches and to fetch uh, copyright and license metadata. Uh, we also we didn't focus only on the tooling part because uh, uh, the main part is a process design. So to make tools uh, make work make tools work together with uh, humans, and uh, so we, we design a, a process where where human and 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 uh, automated work can can uh, work seamlessly together. Uh, and uh, also, we uh, decided to to have a parallel parallel CI pipelines, uh, not synchronous with uh, build uh, and and testing pipelines, in order to have uh, continuous compliance. Uh, then we developed a dedicated dashboard to monitor all this process. And uh, uh, last but not least, uh, we uh, also drafted uh, audit guidelines uh, for human validation in order to uh, ensure consistency, but also to provide transparency uh, in the, so that our work can be reused uh, and trusted by, by others. Uh, the final output uh, was that we, uh, of course, we fixed issues in the Onira project during development by removing offending components, again, during development, not at the release time. Uh, we fixed the issue we found in third-party components uh, upstream whenever possible. Uh, and also we uh, the, the issues that couldn't be solved uh, upstream or uh, we were in a position to solve uh, were reported uh, downstream uh, in, a, in, a, in a final notice. Um, so the, the 2023, uh, uh, the, 2023 we moved forward in uh, basically in, in in three directions uh first we wanted to upstream uh, our metadata collection logic to yocto and uh, so we had uh, uh, initial patch accepted upstream and now we are developing uh, a, a yocto layer to to consume the uh, the uh, unpack traces api where we we uh, we got accepted into to big big. I, I will uh, give you some more details later on. Then improving, basically, we wanted to add uh, a key functionality to resolve binary file licenses and file level licensing compatibilities by mapping uh, binary files to source files. Uh, for now, we have a, a proof of concept uh, for for that. Uh, scaling out 
Uh, so we wanted to adopt the, our tool chain to other similar projects. And uh, we have a full working implementation on Eclipse LIDAR, which is an operating system for software-defined vehicles. And we provided a demo for Linaro Trusted Reference Stack. And um, in the meantime, we have uh, Oniro and Open Harmony that are more and more converging. Uh, so we have this uh, new project that is Sunero for Open Harmony, and um, so uh, we will need in the future to integrate Alliance for Friends into different build systems because uh, Onero for Open Harmony adopts a different build system and similar to to that of uh, Android, and uh, possibly in the future we will uh, uh, integrate uh, aliens for friends in any kind of embedded build system this is uh, actually this was a, one of the final goals uh, since the, the very beginning so we designed uh, the whole thing in order to be modular and uh, so this is just a matter of uh, yeah uh, time but we'll make it to to, to make it uh, interoperable with with any kind of build system and uh, of course, uh, our, our, one of our uh, goals uh, is to integrate other tools, uh, especially the Open Source Review Toolkit, uh, which is a very important tool uh, and we, we, which will add some, some parts that we are still uh, missing in our, in our tool chain. And also Software 360 that probably all of you already know. And uh, another thing that we want to do is to transform uh, individual modules into the independent tools. Uh, I will explain that uh, later on. And uh, also uh, going on with the, 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 the project of adding the functionality to for, for uh, binary file license uh, or automatic uh, resolving. And um, so let's uh, have a quick dive into uh, the, the project. Um, first, uh, uh, the key points we had in mind when we designed and developed Aliens for Friends. Uh, so um, as I said at the beginning, automation is key, but human review automated, of automated scan results uh, is also key in our view especially in the embedded Linux fields, because, uh, because you have no package manager, uh, you need to, to validate uh, the, the metadata you may find, uh, and the, the, there is a lot of complexity that requires a human review in order to actually spot the legal issues inside the, the, the code, inside the components. Uh, but human review is very costly and must be made sustainable. So uh, to make human review more sustainable, we should be able to reuse others' work and others should be able to reuse ours. This is a pillar. This is basically a, a basic open source principle that we wanted to apply also to, to compliance work. But reuse uh, of uh, human review work is possible and works well both ways. So we can reuse others' work and the others can reuse our work only if certain conditions are met and namely uh, we must be sure that we are all reviewing the same thing it it, it seems trivial but uh, uh, it's it's not in practice so the only way to share work is that uh, uh, is to review original upstream sources and not uh, any kind of uh, mixed artifact uh, is uh, provided by by the build system by mixing together different sources and uh, this is uh, true particularly for 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 Yocto, but also for other embedded build systems and um, another uh, important condition is that we can uh, we, we should be able to trust each other's work so the process the audit uh, process should be transparent and uh, the audit criteria should be documented so everyone can decide whether they can trust uh, uh, our results uh, or maybe part of them. And, uh, and in any case, they know uh, how uh, uh, things have been reviewed. And then uh, the third uh, condition is that we, we should work upstream every time it is possible. If we find an issue, we don't need to, to, to first look for workarounds. Uh, 
uh, we need to uh, open an issue in the upstream project and, uh, and try to have it uh, solved. And actually, we managed to, uh, to, uh, to solve a lot of issues upstream. Actually, uh, very recently, an issue we opened more than one year ago in the Raspberry uh, by um, BSP uh, project um, was uh, accepted that, and it was a huge change because it was uh, a license change of, uh, of uh, a firmware component. Uh, uh, and it was a proprietary license that had, had been changed uh, following up on, on our uh, report. Uh, so uh, the, in the, the, this in this way, uh, all of the work can uh, be uh, of use of of, uh, of 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 other people, and uh, um, in this way, we were trying to 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 establish the foundation to to have a commons also in the area of uh, open source compliance. Another uh, key point uh, is continuous compliance. Again, the starting point is the, the same uh, as before. We want automation. We want also uh, human review, but human review requires substantial time, substantial work. Uh, so if we do that only before each release, it turns into a bottleneck and uh, probably uh, the, the, also the, the, the work cannot be done so, so well because of time constraints. Uh, we decided to, to, uh, to turn it into a continuous process flowing in parallel with the development process. So to have continuous compliance. And uh, the practical way we did that, uh, in which we did that, uh, is to have a parallel CI pipelines uh, so we didn't want to stop or to 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 yeah uh, um, yeah delay uh, build or testing pipelines uh, with uh, compliance uh, uh, related stuff. So we we des design a way to have a parallel CI pipelines uh, that uh, continuously uh, feed the phosology with uh, new uh, packages or new variants of the same packages that are added by developers to the project. And uh, we also uh, design a way to monitor progress and results on the audit work. Uh, this is the general slides uh, with which we, we present the workflow, but uh, yeah, it's, um, I understand that it's very um, complex and maybe not very readable in this way. So I will uh, um, go into the details of some of, uh, of the steps of uh, this workflow, uh, workflow later on. Uh, this workflow, uh, uh, is uh, is implemented in CI pipelines, as I said before. So at every commit uh, in the in the main project and also in the side projects, uh, all the workflow that you've seen before uh, runs in, in in pipelines, and uh, and then um, you can uh, get uh, the final results uh, in a dashboard that I will show you later on. So um, the the first uh, the first uh, um, aspect the first step is uh, metadata collection from uh, from the build system and uh, what's the problem we have with Yocto mainly but it may happen also with other build systems uh, we, you have uh, in Yocto you don't have uh, prepackaged components every component uh, is uh, is built uh, from uh, from scratch by by a, a custom customizable recipe and uh, in a recipe, you can do uh, mostly whatever you want. And this is by design in Yocto. But this means that to build a component, a recipe, a recipe may fetch and unpack multiple upstream sources of different kinds. So it may be uh, tarball archives, uh, Git repositories, or a set of NPM packages, uh, or of Rust crate packages. And uh, they can all mix together to build one, one component. Also, downstream patches can be added to, of course. And uh, the, the, the problem is that Yocto archived these mixed unpacked sources as uh, found in its uh, uh, work directory. And uh, the resulting SPDX data produced by Yocto 
uh, represent uh, this uh, mixed archive of sources. So in the example here on the, on the right, uh, you see the, the Python cryptography recipe, which is a, a Python 3 component. And uh, you see that uh, Yocto is, uh, is mixing here a, a tarball archive, uh, a couple of patches, uh, some additional scripts, and then a lot of uh, uh, create uh, uh, Rust packages. And uh, everything is mixed together in the same work tier. And given how Yocto recipe work, a developer may add uh, to, to some URI, some uh, sub dir parameter, so that uh, the upstream package is saved uh, within the directory of another package. Or maybe two packages are mixed together, or even some files may be added or overwritten. So uh, the, the problem is that uh, um, the Yocto uh, at that time didn't have any, any mechanism to trace all this process and so it could provide only uh yeah um overall say data on this downstream artifact uh which is the the recipes work here uh so the uh, initial solution we adopted the current solution uh we use uh, uh native uh, internal sorry yocto libraries uh, to collect the metadata and then uh, we collect uh, uh, the original source packages from Bitbake's uh, download cache. Uh, cache. Uh, this is uh, not the optimal solution, but uh, it was, uh, the, 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 of course, the, the solution that uh, we could uh, um, develop at the time. But we always had in mind that we needed to, to upstream some logic to, into Yocto. And, and that's what we, we did. So now, uh, since the, the latest Yocto release, uh, uh, I guess October last year, um, Yocto Big Bake exposes an unpacked tracer API. Uh, we agreed about this API with the, the Yocto uh, dev team. And uh, we are developing uh, a reference, uh, a Yocto layer, to show how this API can be used in order to uh, collect uh, metadata on original upstream sources during uh, the build process. So you don't need to inspect uh, the, the, the build directory, uh, the download cache that is uh, kind of an ex post uh, analysis that is uh, maybe, yeah, uh, may encounter some problems because you need some heuristics. So now the information comes directly from the source, from the build system. And uh, this is the first, uh, um, the first uh, building block of our tool chain. So collecting metadata, reliable metadata on upstream sources, uh, original upstream sources from the build system. Uh, then uh, another important building block is the Debian measure. So uh, in order to, uh, uh, the, 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 the goal is to find uh, not only exact matches because otherwise uh, would be of a little help, but also close one, uh, close ones. And uh, similarity, we assess similarity, not based on, 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 on just on the code, but mainly on copyright and license headers. So, so we compare if the, the close match uh, have the same copyright license headers of, uh, of, um, of the, 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 the package we are scanning. And so we decide to, to apply uh, the Debian findings uh, uh, based on certain thresholds. Uh, if this is the first uh, um, element of complexity of this uh, part of the tool chain. The second element of complexity is that Debian provides two APIs uh, to retrieve uh, uh, source code and, and, and uh, metadata. Uh, about the packages, uh, uh, the one is uh, offers the, the current uh, repositories, uh, uh, offers a fast response, but uh, data vary over time because uh, all packages uh, are, are uh, deleted from the database and, and new packages are added. So there is no his history and, and what is more important, there is no reproducibility. So two API requests made at different points in time, points in time may give different results. 
Then, so we also use the, a different API, which is the snapshot.debian.org API uh, that providing full historical data. So we have full reproduci reproducibility, but of course uh, we have some downside downsides uh, uh, and basically uh, even to, to technical constraints, uh, uh, the response of the API is low and uh, subject to, to request limits. Uh, so we need to, to uh, build a cache uh, mechanism to, to avoid or to work around these this limits. In the future, uh, we, were, we are willing to transform this Debian matcher, this building block of our toolchain into a completely independent tool that can be used also in other projects. Um, another building block of the toolchain, which actually is not the toolchain, is, uh, is something that is uh, outside of the toolchain, is the human audit activity. As already said, uh, it flows in parallel with the development process. It's an async process uh, uh, compared to the development process. So uh, every time uh, new and modified components are uploaded for Sology, but final audit results will be available all, only at a later point in time. And uh, the, the current status is collected to monitor progress. Uh, and as already said, it's all a, a transparent process and we documented how we audit uh, things in order uh, to, to, to allow our work to, to be trusted. And uh, then the final step is uh, data harvesting. And uh, basically we collect all the information, the relevant information from the big data pool uh, that is created by, by the tool chain. And we uh, try to, to uh, represent them in a final report um, that can be displayed on, on a dashboard. Uh, this is a screenshot, sample screenshot, the dashboard. Uh, so uh, in, in this case, uh, the, the, the audit progress is, uh, is, is uh, the, the, the audit work is complete. And uh, we resolved the, resolve the provenance of all source files. Uh, we have uh, a re, um, yeah, uh, an aggregated representation of uh, license information. And then we can dig into details of the single packages. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, I cannot show you here because we don't have time, but we can also dig into the history of each component within the project. So to see, I don't know if uh, patches have been added over time, if uh, CV fixes have been added and so on. And um, so um, summing up, the key principles uh, we follow in the development of our tool chain are uh, first uh, we need to combine the automation with sustainable human review and uh, and that has uh, some consequences uh, so uh, we need to be able first to to review uh, to sorry to reuse uh, uh, others work and to make our work reusable by others uh, and then uh, uh, we we need to also have a continuous uh, compliance process to to make this sustainable, and also we need to work upstream uh, every time that is possible. Uh, and basically, basically, it's uh, applying the same principles, the same common principles uh, of open source development uh, to the, the the human review, the legal or audit work um, that we are doing on, on Fosology. And uh, the key feature, the highlights uh, of our tool chain are uh, um, first, uh, we focus on getting original upstream sources from Yocto, uh, which as I explained before, is not trivial. Then uh, we focused on being able to uh, consistently consistently reuse metadata from a trusted Deb uh, Linux distribution, Debian. And then uh, we wanted to have tools uh, uh, to monitor human audit process. Uh, so we integrated everything in CI pipelines uh, and uh, the results uh, are uh, showed uh, and are continuously updated in a, in a dashboard. And um, I think that there's, there's a room uh, for 
uh, Q&A session. So if you want me to uh, give you some more detail or if you have doubts, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you very much, Alberto. And we do indeed have time for Q&A. Um, to get it started, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, when it comes to next steps and people helping out, are there particular things you'd like them to get started with in supporting the project? And I noticed that this webinar has already triggered some conversation in our Japan work group. So you know, it has immediately got attention of people. Um, so if people want to help with the project, not just use it, but contribute, what would be most useful for them to start doing? Um, well, it depends uh, on the the use case they want the, the, they want to um, uh, for, for, for for the the possible use case uh, for for them. Uh, if they are developing uh, a yocto based project, probably the most interesting part uh, they they may want to to contribute to uh, is the um, metadata uh, and uh, and uh, upstream source collection part uh, the, the because we are devel developing this uh, new Yocto layer to consume this uh, API in order to collect uh, a reliable and detailed um, metadata uh, on, on because uh, the 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 um the problem with yocto is that uh, it's also uh, that every time you 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 do something new you need to test it on a variety of uh, of different uh, uh, projects uh, because uh, uh, it's uh, because of the complexity of the build system so something that works on your yocto project may not work well in other yocto projects based on on some i don't know strange configuration parameters so uh, the the first thing that we would need would be uh, testers of and uh, and possibly contributors uh, of this new uh, yocto layer we are developing and this is the the first aspect then another uh, aspect um is the debian matcher uh we have uh, we already had some conversation with other uh people that are willing to reuse uh, only the debian matcher part in their toolchain and uh so um the, this uh, will require some work because uh, for now is uh, the debian matcher is a module of alias for friends uh, and uh, should be made independent and uh, since but there is a, a caching mechanism that is integrating in alias for friends basically we should find a way to abstract that caching mechanism in order to 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 make uh, this uh, building block an independent tool uh, this is another uh, possible um, field of uh, uh, for 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 who want to to to, to contribute to the project uh, then, of course, uh, there is uh, the, the general development of the tool chain. Uh, another aspect is that uh, if there are people interested in using the tool chain in, uh, in a, for Android based projects or for build root based projects, uh, this may be another uh, interesting field of, of collaboration. Um, I'm personally doing some, some tests uh, in some uh, build root projects. Uh, uh, but uh, for now, um, yeah, we, we are not um, in the position to to, to start uh, a real development on, on on that part. But if someone is willing to contribute, this would be very welcome. That sounds really clear, and thank you very much. Now, everyone, um, you can ask questions in the chat, or I have given you the ability to unmute yourself and just ask a question as if you were in the room. Okay, I see a question yeah. from Nico. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, another part I didn't mention, uh, of course. Uh, Before you answer, uh, Joe, I'll just yeah. read out the question if that's okay. Ah, okay, okay. Please. So Nico asked, how do you extract audit results from Fossology? Do you export SPDX report via the API or another format? Alberto, over to you. 
Okay, so we do export SPDX reports from uh, Phosology, but, and uh, this doesn't apply only to Phosology, but um, unfortunately to, to most of the tools of there, uh, the implementation of the SPDX standard is not always consistent uh, between one tool and another. So since we since the very beginning we wanted to use uh, SPDX as a, a common language to make the, 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 all the tools uh, uh, talk to each other, uh, we need to work uh, we needed to work a lot uh, in uh, uh, yeah uh, SPDX uh, fixing. So uh, I don't know, uh, Phosology needs some fixing. The, the output of the SPDX output of Solidity needs some fixing. Uh, the, for instance, the, the, the output of the reuse tool, that is another tool that we are use, using for, for other purposes, it needs some fixing. And uh, so this is, uh, uh, yeah, probably this is another interesting uh, field of uh, collaboration because uh, uh, it would be interesting to share experiences or how to yeah, fix these practical issues that uh, unfortunately make it harder to 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 make tools to communicate communicate to each other. Yeah. Hi. Thank, thanks, uh, Roberto, for your for your answer. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Uh, SPDX alignment is a big topic. <laughs> it gets pretty complex. <laughs> do Do you well? You don't use SPDX three dot zero, I guess. Right now, no, but no, is, we is use the, the, the current specification. Uh, yeah, okay, so would it help if Phosology fully supported uh, SPDX 3.0 in the future for you? Yeah, the, 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 the problem that Phosology has is due to some technical depth and some design uh, issues that cannot be solved, uh, has mm, issues in fully representing, I don't know, complex license expressions and so on. So it's uh, it's something that that would deserve um, yeah some yeah would be interested to, to discuss this issue together. Hmm. Now we have another question and Nico um, I'd love if we could follow up on this point you brought and Alberto the technical debt issue is something we I, I think it'd be great if we could dig into that um on a future call to talk about the challenges with updating fossology to see if we can get people to to help um nico to your point about the standards i just wanted to interject um that the the update to spdx3 is something i've heard from a lot of people they're wondering about the timing of when they should prepare to adopt um, so what I'll do is I'll ask the SPDX people to come back and perhaps give us guidance on their current thinking. Would that be useful? Yeah, sure. I'm not actually, I'm not sure how far we are within Phosology. Maybe the best would be, uh, Alberto, if you're, if you're free on Thursday, uh, 11 uh, European time, I think. Um, we're having this uh, community call although I'm not very often, unfortunately. I don't participate that much, um, but they're getting started, started again. So maybe you can, if you feel like joining one of those Thursday, I can send you the, the links. If you want. That, will, that will be great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now I see we have, thank you indeed. I have a question from Fukuchi-san in Japan. Okay, so this one is about um, data. So he says, reuse of others' work for reducing human audit is a great idea. How do you find other works for reusing the data? Did the Debian project offer enough data for reuse? What kind of data is useful for reuse? Um, okay, uh, maybe I can um, give you a... Um... Uh, I guess I should. Sorry, I need to. This oh, it's a. Uh, sorry. Too small. Maybe I can show th this part. Okay, so um, 
uh, in our dashboard, uh, we have a score of the Debian matching of uh, every package. And um, this is represented by, by this uh, kind of uh, triangle here. And um, so we, uh, we saw that the, especially in, uh, on, on Linux uh, operating system distribution, uh, you find a lot of matches, good matches in the, in the Debian distribution. Uh, meaning that uh, maybe you don't find the exact same uh, version, but you find a very close version. Uh, um, the, the, the thing uh, about Debian is that uh, um, they, they all, and Debian based distributions, of course, is that uh, the DEP5 specification uh, provides that uh, uh, every uh, source package should have a copyright file in a machine readable format and it's mandatory that this uh, um, machine readable file contains metadata about about each and every file uh, each and every source file so you uh, it's mandatory to have uh, the license and the copyright of each and every source file in every debian package in practice, it's not always so, so that there are some probably leg legacy packages that have uh, uh, an old style uh, human readable copyright file, but most uh, of, of the packages you can find in Debian have a machine readable copyright file. And uh, um, the, the, the machine readable copyright file is not coming from uh, an automated scanner, is coming only from human work, which may be good or bad, depending on the perspective. But uh, the good part is that uh, um, there are no uh, false positive or false negatives due to uh, automated scanner errors. Uh, probably there may be some uh, small mistakes uh, due to uh, the, the problem that those files need to be maintained over time. So probably uh, not every 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 time a, a new source file is added, the copyright file is updated. And this is also due to the specific machine readable format adopted by Debian that allows uh, for wildcards. And so uh, you can have this uh, global or, or wildcard expressions. So saying, I, I don't know, all files in this directory are subject to this license and, and have this copyright. And if you have a, a, a file to that directory that has a different license and you don't update the copyright file, of course, you have uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, a, a non correct and incorrect information in that file. But uh, we noticed by comparing the results uh, uh, of the audit uh, in Fusology and, and the Debian from compared to the Debian copyright file, those mistakes are very small and very rare and, and mostly are, are about yeah, very negligible uh, components. So uh, we decided to, of course, to to reuse those uh, those metadata. Uh, we may want to, to use also uh, metadata coming from other uh, Debian-based distribution. Of course, uh, if uh, a different distribution, if it's a different kind of distribution is involved, like uh, Fedora, uh, you have a different package format. And uh, what is most important, you have only uh, the main license of the package, but you don't have file level um information and uh, yeah one thing that i didn't mention before why do we want to have file level uh license information because uh in, in the embedded field uh, many packages are complex packages uh and they are composed by different subcomponents uh, subject to different licenses and from the same component uh, you can build uh, uh, different sets of binary files that end up in the firmware that may end up in the firmware or not depending on, on the configuration parameters and those uh, um, files may be subject to different licenses and I don't know some some files may be subject to GPL other binary files may be subject to LGPL or to BSD 
and uh, uh, with only a, a general uh, license statement saying that in this package there are files uh, that may be subject to BSD, LGPL, GPL, doesn't help. So this is why we wanted to, to have uh, always file level license information. And this is why we are trying to, to uh, find a way to automatically resolve uh, binary license files. So we, we don't need to, to manually inspect sources and compare to the, the binaries uh, in order to, to understand which licenses are actually going into the firmware. Now we have time for one more question and Mary has her hand up. Mary, over to you. Um, hey, uh, thanks for a very good demo. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, great. And uh, uh, we use Rokuto also in our um, big department. And uh, when we are doing this license compliance part, as we know, the Yokto or the Android have their own build system for the license compliance. And we found a problem um, in Yocto, the license files in Yocto build do not contain the information about the authors. So instead of, they, they have the just the, the placeholders there. So that's the problem. And I, we think we, this should be fixed. So I don't know if you also notice these issues or it's in the plan kind of to fix it or like uh, with the downstream user fix by ourselves. So basically, we need to add the authors and the copyright notices to some kind of recipes. Uh, um, yeah, the, the idea is to uh, to have a system to um, collect uh, this metadata independently from Yocto. So through uh, a phosology uh, review and then uh, upstream uh, the findings to, to Yocto recipes. This is actually uh, what we we want to do? I, I make an example. Uh, I don't know. It's it's another it's another uh, issue. But just to to give you an example, uh, there are some packages like I don't know the GPG made easy package that uh, um, from which you may build uh, uh, different binaries. One is subject to LGPL, another is subject to GPL, and another is subject to I don't remember maybe MIT or BSD. And uh, actually, there is no way to, to tell what license you are actually have in the firmware. Uh, so once we sorted out this uh, by analyzing the, the data we are collecting from the Octo with this new API we implemented, uh, the, the plan is to, uh, to upstream uh, these uh, findings uh, so that the, 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 the metadata you find in Yocto recipes are more uh, accurate, even if in our approach uh, we prefer to 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 do human review and in depth analysis on all packages. So it's an improvement. Yes. Mm. Great. Yeah, we don't want to mean a criticism to to Yocto, but uh, uh, much of what we were doing is outside the scope. Is a is a something they are trying to do to be helpful to downstream users, but it's not their main uh, concentration. Is uh, to, to 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 provide uh, meaningful and complete information. We have helped them to have a better tracking system, and uh, so. They are willing to to op uh, cooperate with uh, with the, the community to have better uh, ways to track and the most more helpful uh, tools also on the legal side as well as they have in the, on the actually their their uh, main uh, objective, which is make software, make operating systems. So, so we're not relying on that. We are uh, e e we're trying to as well improving uh, the information they provide. This is not their main focus, and um, uh, what they provide is already very helpful. And uh, we are thankful. Mm -hmm. to them. Great. They give us a lot of attention as well. Mm. Yeah, I, I can share like how we do internally um, for like a temporary solution for this Yacht project. One of the possible way uh, to fix this problem is like to build an associative array in batch 
with hard coded info about recipe and copyright notice, then add these notices at the end of the license output. So um, basically, we will append the recipe name and information about the authors just right after the licensing end. Uh, yeah, so because we are defining some kind of critical projects so far, and we need to make sure all of this information is correct. <laughs> <clears throat> and thank you very much for your demo and answer. Thank you. And uh, Nico had a, a small follow-up on Flossology and SPDX3 support. Uh, in the chat, he shared a link for the Flossology community meetings on Thursdays at 10.30 to 11 a.m. CET. Uh, CET would be U.S. Central, I guess. Oh, no. European. No, time. sorry. It's a Central European time. Sorry, my yeah. brain is broken today. I live in Japan. <laughs> I heard it today, yeah, and it's that. 2 a.m. <laughs> yes, uh, so it's Central, it's 10.30 Central European time. So that's going to put it at 9.30 UTC on Thursdays. Uh, brilliant. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Thank you for the audience. Um, I hope we'll have you back, Alberto and Carlo, for another webinar in the future. And for everyone who asked a question, thank you. You really helped us expand on this. And for those of you watching the recording, don't worry. You can still ask questions. Uh, come to our mailing lists. You can go to the Automation Workgroup mailing list or OpenChain's main mailing list and ask a question, and we'll make sure that Carlo and Alberto have it. Take care, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and you know, stay happy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.